uh, not used as much as it used to be in, in the way it was originally designed by the FCC. Uh, rather, what often happens is the local emergency management organizations form an agreement with ARIES, and the ARIES operators will also double as RACI operators in the event that there is a, a situation where the county wants to be in direct control of amateur radio communications. We do not have that form of arrangement in Carroll County at the moment, but uh, it does exist in other places. Then there's a group called Saturn, S-A-T-E-R-N. It's the Salvation Army Team Emergency Radio Network. And it's amateur radio operators who are also volunteers with the Salvation Ar Army, and they operate the network. Then there's MARS, Military Affiliate Radio Service. And this is a Department of Defense Communications program managed by the Army, Navy, and Air Force. And it's largely, uh, it's way back in the day, was used to provide a way for soldiers abroad to communicate back home uh, with their families. Of course, now with uh, 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 cellular communications and satellite communications and Internet and everything else, uh, it doesn't get utilized as much as it used to, but Mars is still in existence and still performs uh, services in conjunction with the various branches of the military. There's another group out there called SHARES, and it is a uh, conglomerate of local, regional, and federal government agencies and several non-governmental organizations. So it's sort of a melting pot of all of them. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm not as familiar with that one to tell you much more than I had about it. There's another one out there called REACT, and it's an emergency communications group originally comprised of citizen band radio operators. Eventually, the group expanded to include amateur radio, FRS, GMRS, and uh, the MURS radio services as well. And it is still an active organization in many parts of the country. Now, as you might imagine, all of these groups have a lot of common traits. Uh, one of which, which we're going to go into next week, is the multi-tier deployments. How, what happens? How do you get deployed? Uh, how is it organized? Uh, what's the, the, the plan for if there is a deployment? Every organization has their own, but they all share an awful lot of commonality. Uh, and as a result, uh, there's usually a designated group of people who are part of, of a rapid response team. And this is, uh, this is the folks that turn out initially when an emergency happens to man the radios. Uh, the team is known by various names, including Rapid Emergency Deployment Team, that way they call it the Red Team uh, in New Hampshire, uh, Emergency Response Team, ERT, which is a very common one, and Quick Response Team, which is QRT. We're going to talk about how those teams work and what they do uh, in the future nets. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it back over to Lee for late check-ins. We'll come around to the round table and then uh, uh, press ahead with... Uh, with uh, closing down the net. Uh, Lee, go ahead and take it, sir. Okay, is there any late check-in? Please come now. Here in line, let's go to round table with WS4BK. Thanks, Lee. Um, if anyone's got any questions regarding tonight's uh, presentation or uh, other information that uh, relates to emergency communications and amateur radio or just generally good for the cause, please call now. KM4BYH. KM4BYH, go ahead, sir. If you could give me the name of that last group you were talking about, I got a little lost in all the, the acronyms there right quick. I didn't quite catch the, the very last one, if you could just give the name of it again. Yeah, I threw a bunch of them out there, and I think it's amazing how hard some of these people had to have worked to come up with some kind of an acronym to make a word out of it. Uh, the last one was REACT, uh, R-E-A-C-T. And that's the one that's comprised of everything from citizens, band, radio operators, to GMRS, FRS, and mirrors. 
It's React, and you can look them up online. As a matter of fact, they may be react.org. It might be their website. If I, I'm really pulling from memory there, so if I'm wrong about that, sorry. No problem. I appreciate it. I, I'll try to pay better attention next time with all the letters sloped around and such. I appreciate it, Brian. Thank you for all you do. This is KM4BYH. Back to net. Thanks, Wayne. Uh, anybody else with any questions or comments regarding the presentation or anything else that's uh, good for the cause, uh, please call now. Good for the cause, WDLQT. Go ahead and take it, Jim. The floor is yours. I want to toss this out. Thank you, Brian. It's WDLQT. Um, I think I may have been a little overzealous in my... Um, my fox hunt plans at our meeting I had said March the 11th thinking that we had a couple weeks yet for March the 11th to get here but March the 11th is a week from this Saturday what I would like to do if it's okay with uh, I'll, I'll run it by Wayne but Wayne I'd like to go ahead and bump that out to March the 25th this is a Saturday um, if that's good with Wayne and, and I will then um put plans together to do that. That will give us a meeting and a little bit of time to get the word out. Wayne, is that okay with you? Public ID at LQT. Yeah, if that's the best you can do, I'll be okay with it. Yeah, no, seriously, no problem. Uh, like I told you the other day, you know, push it out wherever you need it to, and I'm good with it. So I, I think it'll be better that way, actually, because I believe we're going to be pushing all of ourselves with schedules and whatnot, you know, not realizing we were as close as we were to that date. So I am definitely good with it. K 